Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to draw this cute orange car on a tropical beach for Sketchbook Sunday. I'm using three colors of watercolor here from Renaissance. They are from a Etsy shop owned by a friend of mine, and she's released these new triad sets. So this is a phthalo blue, a transparent yellow, and a magenta, and we're going to mix everything from those three colors. I'm starting off by sketching with an orange colorized pencil, and I'm sketching pretty lightly because I want to make sure that um, I can erase if I need to. I usually don't. I usually like to have some of the pencil lines there, but um, I, I enjoy using that uh, because it's kind of fun to see that colored lead, I think. Just something different than regular graphite. Um, there is a real-time version of this tutorial up in Critique Club, so if you remember, go check that out. It'll be under the May bonus lesson number two heading, and if you are not a member of Critique Club but would like more information, I will have a link to that in the video description. Now, I'm not one to generally draw like uh, machinery or architecture. Um, I'm not sure why. I just tend to gravitate more to organic shaped things like plants and fruit and still life and uh, landscapes. But I thought this was kind of fun. And man, it's been a cold winter and I was just looking forward to some sunshine. We're about to have a few really warm days here in Maine. And I was just uh, feeling beachy. I wanted to have something nice and tropical. I also wanted to try out this new sketchbook from Arteza and I thought this was one of the expert pads but it's actually one of the premium pads but they have changed the paper from the first premium pads where they used to have that kind of linen texture. This is a much more random texture that I like quite a bit. It's heavily sized so uh, keep that in mind if you're considering these sketchbooks because they will lift. You'll be able to lift up your paint pretty easily so that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you like to work. Um, I enjoyed working on this paper. Uh, the back side of it is more of a hot press surface and the front side is a cold press surface, but again, it's not like the texture of the paper they originally came out with for their premium pads. They have definitely improved that. Um, and I didn't notice any pilling or having any issues as I was working on it, so uh, I was pretty pleased with that. You get two in a pack, so it's pretty affordable and you get a lot of paper. So this, if you're looking for something for inexpensive sketching, it's definitely a, uh, a good buy. I'll have all of the things that I've mentioned today linked down below um, and if I forget something just let me know like the reference photo why do I always forget the reference photo it's from Unsplash in case I forget it I'm really gonna try to be good and get everything in there um, but it is from Unsplash in case I forget it now mixing neutrals was kind of a challenge with this triad of colors uh, because the colors were so vibrant but mixing all three of your primaries in the right proportion I started with yellow then added red because it's mostly an orangey tone when browns are like desaturated oranges and then I added a little blue just to kick down or desaturate the orange color and for the shadows I used more of purpley tones so that would be the magenta plus the blue and um, you just got to balance your colors it's a great exercise in color mixing I used the phthalo blue um, diluted in the sky and I used it diluted in the water as well but a little bit stronger and when I did the horizon there um, I made sure that it didn't break at um, like the top of the car or where the window meets the body of the car. I wanted that to go through the windshield because it would be much more pleasing. And it just, uh, if you break like a horizon like that um, hidden, it is not as satisfying to look at. So it's something to keep in mind. Now you'll see when I painted the trees there, I left the, um, I didn't paint the ground over the trunk of the tree or the sea over the trunk of the tree on that first one because I knew I'd have a line if I did that because these colors are extremely transparent. So keep that in mind if you're working with transparent colors. Now the tree in the distance, it's going to be skinnier, it's going to be darker, so I, I painted everything right over that. I didn't worry about that one single bit. Now I'm playing with a new brush here. This is a sword brush, so it's like a dagger, but it's got longer bristles on it, and it's a... Um, uh, I think it's called Black Knight. It's from Jerry's Artorama, and uh, I got a three pack with three different sizes, and this is a smaller one. And I was just kind of experimenting with it here in the um, in the palm fronds, and I like it for that technique. It is very floppy and wiggly and hard to control, but um, but it gave me really nice like leaves, palm leaves. It would do good for grasses and anything like pinstriping or where you need to get long, long uh, skinny lines, such as like boat riggings or uh, nets or something like that. Now I'm using lots of colors in the trunk. I love to do palm trees where I just kind of like paint some almost like the silhouette of it and then just drip in the colors. And since the light source is on the right, I am putting a darker shadow along the left of the tree to give it a little bit of roundness. 
And I'm using my trusty old credit card scraper, which is just a cut up old gift card to scratch the lines for the bark in the tree. So it's a nice uh, time saving tip and it gives you a great texture. Now I'm working at a little bit of an angle. I have um, a roll of tape actually underneath the top of my sketchbook so I can easily uh, change the angle if I need to. Um, but when you do that, your paint will tend to slide down to the bottom of your wet area and you have to be careful that you don't get cauliflowers or back runs there. So if you see that happening, just make sure that you take like a dry brush and set it in the puddle to suck it up or gently dab it with a paper towel. I'm using a paper towel to lift a highlight out on the right side of the tree. That's the side the light is hitting. And I did that while the paint was still wet. So um, it just saves me the scrubbing. You could like if it wet, if it dried on you, you could always scrub it out. Now the far away tree I'm doing darker because it would appear to be a little bit more in silhouette. You'd see some color, but not as um, not as light and bright as you would see the closer tree. And that's just going to give the scene a little bit of scale. Now in my reference photo, there were three trees, I think, and um, I omitted one so that I could, you know, have it a little bit have the, the rule of thirds have three items, which is just a little bit more pleasing to look at. And the technique for the palm fronds is just about the same as the other one. Just kind of um, painted it, dripped in color, and let it do its thing. That's one of my favorite ways to paint something like that that's organic, especially far away. I don't want to put a lot of detail in it, and I want the paint to show off its beauty and um, just be kind of flowy and free. I know I needed some like uh, I needed some shadows and things in the tree that was closer to us in the palm fronds. I started to put some in and I scraped some in, but I wasn't quite happy with it. So at this point, I'm just letting that dry and I'll come back to it later. Now for the the orange car, I first went in with some yellowy color for the highlights. Then I mixed in a little magenta and I went in and added the darker areas. And basically my goal here is to fill in the car's paint and get, um, get an all over coverage. So it's not gonna be perfect yet, but I just wanna get that kind of all over coverage and assign some of the highlights, the darks and the mid-tones while I'm at it. Now, as you can see there, the car's a little wonky. <laughs> it looks like uh, that, that was somebody's first car on the assembly line, I think. <laughs> somebody's first day on the job. It's a little crooked, but um, but that's all right. It's uh, it's retro. It's a retro car, retro orange car on the beach. I always wanted to have like a, a yellow convertible roadster. I thought that would be so fun. That's, what, that's my midlife crisis car, I think, when the kids go off to college. Yep, yellow roadster. One of the ones that looks like it's smiling at you. Yep, <laughs> I'm planning the midlife crisis, guys. All right, now I am mixing up some darker color. Again, I use a three primaries, but heavier with the blue and the red. And I'm going in and I'm kind of going around some of the coconuts, strengthening that shadow on the left. And um, I just kind of painted a few slices to represent the fronds. And I'm going in and doing the darker details on the car, the numbers on the license plates, the steering wheel, interior parts of the car that you can see, like the rearview mirror, and little details like that. And I'm dragging out some of that dark color in the tree because I thought it looked a little harsh. Um, and just kind of tweaking around as I go. And uh, at this stage, I just tend to skip around an awful lot. I thought maybe I would scrub out a little more highlight because I, I knew that that paint was, uh, the paper was really easy to lift on and I was able to pull out my highlights really well that way. Now you could always use a colored pencil uh, or some gouache if you want to, but try lifting first because your paper might respond really well to it. Some papers do, some papers don't. Um, generally, the more sizing that's in your paper, the better it's gonna lift. Now this, you can see it almost lifted too well and it was way too bright under that car after I did that lifting. Um, and so, you know, just definitely go easy. It's it's very, very easy to lift on this paper. Now the uh, brush I like to use for lifting is a filbert and it's a, a Taclon filbert. So it just uh, has just the right amount of push for it. I like the Menta um, watercolor scrubbers for this. And somebody told me that Joanne Fabrics now carries that line. So if you have a big Joanne's in your town, I used to get mine at AC Moore, but they're no longer in business. Um, I think they're around $5 a brush definitely a, a good value for inexpensive watercolor brushes. I'll see if I can find them online, I'm not sure, uh, but if I can, I'll link them up. Now, let's see. Oh yeah, I thought it would be nice to have a few grasses around the palm tree base and around the, the path, but I don't know if I really like that or not now that I look back at it. Um, you know, obviously I could lift it up if I wanted to because this paper is so good for lifting. And those are staining colors. Those three colors are very, very transparent colors. So um, it kind of shows you how well that paper lifts. 
just something to think about. You may not like lifting. If you're someone who wants to do a painting with tons and tons of glazes on it, this is probably not the paper for you, but this is also a sketchbook and it's generally more suited to like taking out and doing quicker paintings on. So having an ability to lift if you're out painting on location, so you don't have to bring, um, you know, any ma masking fluid or white paint or anything like that. It does give you a little bit of, a, of an edge there. And there you have it, taking off the tape to see the results. Now, just as watercolor. I really like it, but you can always go in and add some color pencil. I did decide to go in and add a little pencil because I was curious as to how pencil was going to do on this. So I just added a few details on the car and called it a day. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want to see the full tutorial, you can check it out in Critique Club. There'll be a link in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.